at that gorgeous fish. What a beauty. It's a beautiful trout. He, uh, he's been in the lake for a while. He probably came in here as a planter, but uh, he's probably been moving back and forth since the, the, since the springtime as a, uh, as a holdover. So we'll get him back in the water and uh, continue pushing on up the Bear River Arm. Howdy guys, Cal Kellogg here. You know, one of the things I always go out of my way to do when, when I'm fishing is observe and try to take in all the details. I try to have attention to all the details, you know, with my tackle, my line, my lures. Does that hook look good? Is that not tied right? Those kind of, you know, details. But I also try to pay attention to the details of what's going on around me on the lake. I try to see, you know, what, what are the conditions? How are the fish reacting? All that kind of stuff, because knowledge is power. And I guess it all comes down to, to being observant. And uh, now everybody has a different fishing style. Some guys fish very similar, you know, uh, approaches, but when it comes down to it, there's differences in everyone's approaches. And some people, they have drastically different approaches and they are successful. Having said that, I've got to fish with a lot of different anglers this year. I've got to fish a lot of different spots. I've got to observe a lot of fishermen in action and uh, I've come up with, with what I believe are six fundamental mistakes that a lot of trollers um, make when they're out there looking for fish, okay? First mistake, drag too tight. If you drag a lure around, especially one of my lures or one of my trolling flies, if you drag it around at a lake long enough, a lake that has big trout, you're going to hook one of them, probably sooner rather than later. And, uh, you know, your, your average fish you catch might be pan size and you might be able to have a pretty tight drag and crank those fish in and you've got no problem. The problem arises when you've got your drag set to fight a 14 inch fish and a 10 pound trout strikes and bam, he snaps you off or you rip the hook out of his mouth. It's because he's too big and heavy to drag through the water. So... Mistake number one, drag too tight. Um, it's better to have a drag that's too loose than a drag that's too tight. Um, another mistake I see people make is running line that's too heavy. Um, if you use line that's too heavy, even if you're using fluorocarbon and the, can't, the fish can't see it, um, the problem arises in how your lures respond on that line. And usually if you're using line that's too heavy, it's going to deaden the action in your lures and you're not going to get optimum performance out of your lures. Now, along those same lines of kind of, you know, kind of in the category of, of drag and line that's too heavy, a lot of guys use line that is too light. Um, fluorocarbon line can't be seen by fish, you know, basically because it reflects water or reflects light at the same rate as water does. And that renders that fluorocarbon virtually invisible. You don't need it every day, but how would you know? So it makes sense to use a fluorocarbon leader every time you're out trolling. And there is a sweet spot when it comes to trout trolling between, you know, being too heavy and being too light. Um, for me, the perfect line choice in most situations for my leader is eight pound test. If I'm expecting large fish, say I'm pulling a big Rapala or something like that, I'll bump it up to 10 pound test. I found that if I get above 10, I start catching less fish and I attribute that to lure action. Conversely, if I get much down below eight, you know, I can go with six, but I hear from guys all the time that they're running four pound test. Man, that line is, is super light. And if you're using fluorocarbon, fluorocarbon has very little stretch. If you're using a four pound leader, fluorocarbon leader on a lead core rig, you've got very little forgiveness in that rig. And four pound line, you could snap it on a, on a hook set. If you're in a situation where you're setting the hook, a fish can just, just snap that right off on a hard strike. If you got the drag just a little bit too tight or your drag, you know, you're fighting a fish and the drag is a little, little sticky. Maybe, maybe it's a cold morning and that fish, you know, moves off or does a hard head shake. 
they could pop you right off on four pound test. So, you know, word to the wise, work that sweet area, work that area between say 10 pound test at the top, um, six pound test at the bottom, eight pound test in my opinion is just about perfect and run a, a, a light drag. Now I got notes down here. The other mistake guys make is they troll in a straight line. And I just made a video about that. When you're trolling, you want to vary your direction and you want to vary your speed. You want that lure moving, you know, one way and then another. And when you're turning through the water and you're varying the speed, the lure is also moving up and down in the water column. When we're out fishing, we have a lot of fish come in follow our gear and peel off. And uh, if, if that lure makes uh, an unexpected motion or speed change or rise or drop as they're following it, you have a pretty decent chance of triggering a strike from a fish that if you were just trolling in a straight line at a, at a steady speed, probably would not have committed and actually hit. And I have a lot of underwater footage of that on my gear where, you know, I'll have a troll and fly swimming along, fish will come up right behind the troll and fly, look at it for a while, peel off never to be seen again. So vary your speed, vary your direction, and that's gonna cause your lure to do some erratic things in the water. And those erratic things are often what trigger strikes. That's the whole secret behind the maglib. That lure has, it doesn't have a steady action. It has a skip beat action. It'll lock into a, a swimming pattern and it'll kick out. It'll lock in, it'll kick out. And that is what triggers the strikes with a maglib. Now moving down the list here, two more things. One, guys don't experiment. And by don't experiment, I mean they go out to a lake one day and they're trolling whatever they're trolling. They're trolling flashers and an orange needlefish. And they catch a bunch of fish. Terrific. The next time they go to the lake, they catch a fish on flashers and an orange needlefish. And now every time they fish, no matter where they fish, no matter what the conditions are, no matter how deep the fish are, all they do all day is drag around an orange needlefish behind that set of flashers. That's terrific if the fish are hitting that. But the fish don't hit one thing every day. There's no magic lure. There's no magic speed. There's no magic depth. Fishing, you know, the most successful trollers when it comes to fishing for trout, they use a systematic approach. They know fish... Fish have kind of certain modes of operating and they run through approaches that are going to trigger those fish in certain situations. They experiment, they take the temperature of the fish, they mess with size, speed, color, the types of bait, and, and, and they listen to what the fish are telling them and then they, they dial in on what's working on any given day or maybe any given hour during the day. So experiment 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 and start to to settle on those tools and those approaches that you can count on but not just one approach or two approaches have a list of approaches and when you hit the lake say to yourself i've got plan a i've got plan b i've got plan c watch the conditions take the temperature of the fish experiment play with things figure it out that's part of the fun of fishing. It's detective work. The most successful trollers, the most successful anglers are guys that can think like a detective. You wanna think like Sherlock Holmes. Try to deduce what's going on, what's working, what's not working. You know, eliminate approaches that aren't working on any given day and eliminate unproductive water and you're gonna have a lot of great days out on, on the lakes you like to fish. Final thing, this is a biggie for me, lead core line. There are too few guys running lead core line. They think, you know, I've got this $60,000 aluminum sled and I've got $4,000 electric downriggers on it and they're super cool and I look super cool and I've got a side planer over there and that's super cool too and I'm a super cool dude because I've got all this expensive stuff and lead core is something my grandpa used to use and I'm not going to use it because I'm too super cool to use lead core. The bottom line is, and I've talked about this on the channel recently, lead core line, particularly my hybrid lead core rig, it has certain properties 
that add action to the lures and it also puts out an electrical charge into the water. That line um, oscillates, it moves differently through the water column than anything else. It adds subtle movement to your lures and lots of times if the fish are within range of lead core, and for me that means anything in the top 25 feet, lead core will outperform downriggers most days. I've tried them head to head and just consistently. And anglers that I've taught how to use my hybrid system, they report the same thing. They'll go out, they'll be using downriggers, they'll be using divers, they'll be using my lead core system, and guess what? The lead core rod produces the lion's share of the strikes. So if you're not using lead core, you, you need to get a, a lead core rod, spool it up, employ my hybrid system, give it a try, and uh, just the performance, the success that you have on that rig is going to sell you on lead core line and you're gonna realize lead core isn't just a tool of the past generation it's a tool for anglers now whether you're fishing in a sixty thousand dollar big beautiful sled or you're fishing out of a pedal kayak lead core line is a key tool it's just one tool in your tackle box but it's an important tool if you want to catch more and bigger fish if you want to maximize your success on the water run lead core those are the six mistakes Correct those mistakes, guys, and you're going to catch more and bigger fish. I guarantee it. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. If you're looking for trout gear, fishhuntshoot.com. Grab one of those yellow lead core rods or some of my spoons, whatever. Just go check out my store. We have gift cards available. Um, I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. I'm signing off. You have a great day, and uh, I'm going to get on with my morning here. Anyway, thanks for all the support, guys. I'm Kel Kellogg.